Back in the backyard, yeah. Brad, how are you? Hey, hey, you got some new stuff. I missed every one of them. Oh, there's <laughs> three of them. Look at this, Old Faithful. Been around for years and years and years, red. Then we have blue, Old Faithful, but blue. And we have, I decided to make a Christian outreach. Uh, I made them, I wanted them white, and then I called them and said, hey, add to it, okay? And it's amazing, we're not gonna get too carried away with that, but it's amazing how many people, when they buy one of the round ones, now they buy, actually, they buy the white one with the Christian. Uh, that is awesome, that is awesome. Here, and, I, and how would we use it? Mm. And here's a little new something for your table. <laughs> Hair on my tongue. All right, uh, for the table, we have, Da -dum, bum, ba -da 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 -dum, da -dum. A really cool <laughs> little P. I thank you very much. Will it sharpen? Probably not. Okay, so let's dig deeper. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. So we have a, uh, a pocket knife that's uh, screwed on, you know, probably, you know, sandwiched together, obviously, in here. And uh, we have the whole, actually, all right. It's, wow, that's like a spring and a half. Uh, you know, it might not have been an expensive knife, but by God, it's pretty tough and everything. Uh, so let's see. It bites a little. Okay. But that's not quite good enough. Actually, it's really not quite good enough. Uh, so let's, um, open up my, uh, my, the black bag and we got a plunder of stuff in there. So we're going to get, I think I opened it upside down. Oh, you know, I've seen, uh. I hate dropping names in a way, but a guy stopped by yesterday and said, uh, you know, I have one of these about years ago. I bought the green one and I thought, green, 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 what do you buy? <laughs> well, I totally forgot about the, the biggest sharpener that we made. And it's got the whistle, the fire starter, it's got a storage cavity. Right now we're, we're, we're totally out of them. Now they're, they're, right now they're gone. Okay, and may not return. The fact you're even talking about it. I yeah, noticed. so anyways, and boy, look how clean and nice that one is. So another thing I noticed, go to E.J. Snyder, okay? Go to YouTube, E.J. Snyder, and look at his videos on, he's got a fire starting series going. All right, and I noticed that E.J. Snyder from Discovery Channel lost, or not lost, uh, Naked and Afraid, 40 Day Challenge, Dual Survivor, all that stuff, E.J. Snyder. Uh, and EJ, if you happen to watch my videos, thank you very much for being my friend uh, quite a few years now. And I'm really glad to see that you're actually using my sharpener for the fire starter, okay? But just take a look and you'll see EJ Snyder using this one right here to make the spark to start his fires, okay? Uh, so we'll just lay that one off to the side. And I think for now, we're going to use uh, the little... Uh, no, use your rounds, the newbies. Oh, you want to use the newbies? Yes. Okay, you want to use... Uh, one of these, okay, and uh, that's a nice Patriot pack you got. Let's there. see. I think I can do this. Yeah, red, white, and blue. The Patriot pack. Order all three for only uh, one hundred and thirty nine ninety five. <laughs> I'll you put them on sale though. People don't. You may believe get them. a discount, but for me, I'm going to charge one hundred and thirty nine ninety five for them. Then twenty five dollars shipping. <laughs> so you're better off if you go to the website. I'm pretty sure. All right. So anyway, we have. A knife here okay we have our normal thing we have a square corner lengthways there and we have a square corner lengthways here i call it the open uh, face straight line corners lots of things i can do with that so i'm going to set it on here so if you look no don't get too high look right straight in so you can see that parallel right there 15 degrees is somewhere in that neighborhood let it turn come down here where it's comfortable all right, match the bevel, look at the shine. If it shines too much on, on the apex, I call that the toe. The heel is back here. If I hold still, you can already see there's a little dark line between the apex and the heel. That's because they actually ground this, and the, the very furthest part out on the grinding wheel goes a little deeper than it does on the toe or the heel. So I can look at that and see if I'm tipping it right, and when it gets shiny all the way across, from the heel to the apex, the toe of the blade, the cut, okay, the toe of the bevel. All right, just throwing a lot of words out there so you really do get the idea. A lot of people call things different names. I do that all the time because I have never been, nor will I ever be, a really, boy, feel that heat all of a sudden? Good, I mean, that was like a furnace got turned on. 
um, and just like that, go right on out here. You can set them down on your knee and do this. And no, I'm not filling my pants with shavings because in the first place, there's no visible shavings even coming off of this blade when I touch it that light. And I didn't do the Denver Magazine test first. Uh-oh, shame on me. So we do that, that. Well, I did show you this. Now watch, I'll get in the sun. Okay, if I touch that light, Okay, it's actually getting quite sharp. So we'll do this just a little more like that. Now I'll do this side, come back here and back by the hilt out this way. I know I didn't say kilt. That is something that the Scotsman wear, I think. So just like that, 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 that. And yes, I am more like a machine because I've been doing this for years and years and years, and I've done a lot of that. Okay, so. Denver Magazine. Okay, so let's do this. We have a little bit of wind, and believe it or not, a little bit of wind will blow the paper, and it makes it aggravating, but let's see what we got now. Okay, that needs a little help. Uh, working sharp, it's probably plenty for working sharp. I don't want my knives for a work knife, I don't want them sliced paper. They're going to be so thin, they'll never hold an edge. Um, but let's see. Oh, that takes the thumbnail right just make off. It just a, a little sharper. Just a little sharper. Okay, let's do, let's uh, go back to the old red, I guess. So I'm going to put a little pressure on it. Not much. You won't see any glitter on my pant leg there, my knee. Just like that, because I'm not pressing that hard. Now, the blade is getting magnetized, so I will see uh, little tiny whiskers of metal on the tip of the blade after a little while here, just like that. Right now, I'm just thinning it down. I'm trying to get down to around a 15 degree bevel on each side. Uh, and then I'm gonna explain something to you. I'll, I'll actually show you and explain something to you. Believe it or not, the sharpness of the cutting edge does not have as much to do with slicing paper as, I'm going to let you think about it, as what? The sharpness, the apex of the blade does not have to do as much with slicing paper as one other thing. As much as what? Start thinking about it. Technique? Some, nope. Some of you may come up with it pretty fast. Believe it or not, an awful lot of people that claim to know an awful lot about sharpening and everything else, because I talk to them at the gun shows, have no idea what the most important thing about slicing paper is on a knife. They never come up with it. It's so easy. All right, so let's pretend we're taking the wire edge off now. So pump, some people say they'll see me do what I just did for two minutes or whatever. And then they say, yes, but you're just honing the blade. No, I'm actually cutting the blade, cutting the blade. Then when I flip it every pass, I say now. That means now, not then. Now I'm just taking the wire edge off the blade. So a lot of people say, all he did is hone it. No, I cut the blade. Same, uh, you're gonna see the same amount of metal off the blade Oh, see, I okay. feel a lot better about that. That changed so much. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you the most important thing about slicing paper is actually how wide is it at the heel. So your heel is back here. I'm not pointing probably to it. I not can't see, but back here, not out there this is the toe of the blade that's the apex the heel of the blade here's the most important thing about how well a knife will slice paper how thick is the heel because you have to force the heel the thickness through the paper and you actually have to force the paper apart so especially if you were to push test i gotta just get moving here all right when I do that, the heel has to actually push the paper apart because if I just cut it with a micro thousandths of an inch, it doesn't have to spread. It would just go right through it. 
But if you're gonna slice paper, and this needs a little bit more, that's not bad. But, okay, if I put the paper back together like this to match only the thickness of the blade, see how far that paper's gotta come apart? So I actually have to force that side out. And then the deeper you go, let's say I go here, from here to there, from here to there, I actually have to bend that paper out or turn it or something, or I'm not gonna get that knife through there. So when you slice and you see somebody else slice and you see me slicing paper and, and you say, oh, that's really not very sharp. You do have to take in consideration how thick is the blade? See, this is a pretty thin blade. Then it's, you know, ground flat. Then it's, and it's not hollow ground. Eh, it maybe has a tiny hollow ground to it. But otherwise, it's more like a Scandi grind with a mic, what they call the secondary bevel on. It's not a micro bevel, it's secondary bevel. And so back here at the heel, if you were to measure how thick it is right straight through the blade from this heel to that heel, that is how far the knife actually has to push the paper apart to, to get the knife through there. So if you have a, a chef knife that's only 5 sixteenths to possibly a sixteenth of an inch thick back here, then you have two inches. It tapers all the way down, 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 down. And then it has a little teeny tiny secondary bevel on it. So at the, the heel of the blade on a, a chef knife, you're, you're probably going to be half the thickness of this knife right here. So it's going to slice through the paper an awful lot easier. And besides that, with a really big knife, believe it or not, you can slice through paper an awful lot easier just because of the dynamics of a bigger knife, longer knife, and all that versus a pocket knife. So for a, a working edge on... Let's just make it a little bit sharper. <laughs> that is plenty sharp, but let's just hurry. This side, and I'm gonna thin it a little. I'm gonna press hard enough. Okay, watch this. I'm gonna press hard enough. Hopefully I get some glitter on that black surface. I'm probably still not pressing hard enough. And I turn it over and do the same thing. I'm gonna cut this side pretty hard to get the heel thinner, and then I'll show you. and I'm mainly pushing down on it when I go forwards. So to make a knife, reprofile a knife, sharpen a knife, hone the knife, finish the entire process, I can do it all with my corner sticking out there on my sharpener. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing glitter on the black surface just like that. And I'm starting to see the bevel changing because I'm thinning it down. I'm going for what, what from what was probably 20 degrees on this knife from the factory down more like the 15 or even possibly 10. All right, now come in close, whatever you need to do. See all the, the metal on the table? As hard as I was pressing, as much as I did that, backed up by a solid surface, everything else, that's all the metal I took off. That's because I was pressing down hard. So you people out there that you instantly go to this. Oh, you just took off too much metal. You ruined that blade. You ruined the cutting edge. That's what you sound like. You ruined that cutting edge. Go see a psychiatrist, especially one that sharpens knives. So just like this. And then I'm going to show you the blade after I cut it hard for what three minutes maybe I've been doing that so obviously it doesn't take off too much metal very fast because if it was really taking metal off it wouldn't have taken me two or three minutes to reprofile that blade so you know think what you want to ignorance is bliss in your own mind you can say anything you want to you don't have to back it up you don't have to prove it you don't have to be in front of anybody nobody knows who you are you can say anything you want to that's why I tell people all the time, bet me. All right, so. Also, I'm going to tell you another little secret. Uh, get rid of that one. If I go lengthways like this, this, you, you actually kind of have to capture the blade deep 
so that, that the top part above the blade is, is strong enough and stiff enough that it will offer a little resistance so the knife can go through it. The more shallow, what this little cut here, okay, on a really sharp knife, and if I cut up, okay, now I'm trying to stretch the paper so the paper gets more rigid. I tell everybody everything I know there is about slicing paper. I, I don't try to hide anything. Now see, and I use thin paper. Now I'm gonna cut up and I can almost get it to cut off. So I'll give you, you know, paper cutting 101. I'll tell you everything I know there is about it. I'll tell you how to cut paper. Uh, you take one of the knives that you think is super sharp, don't whack at it, and just toy with it and play with it and stuff. And if your knife will really actually cut radiuses and get up there where it's thin, the piece of paper instead of thick, and it slices really well, then yes, you have the knife pretty sharp. You also have it pretty thin so that the heel of the blade isn't like four times, five times thicker than the apex, the cutting edge, and uh, it'll slice even better. So if I want to make this knife really slice, I might take a belt sander and I'll take, I'll take it back to where I have an eighth of an inch showing right here, like clear back to there. That means that that blade is super thin. And then if I polish it, the paper will slide over the ground or grind uh, on the knife easier. So I, there's a lot of stuff that I can do to make the knife slice paper better, but that edge will never hold. Now, if you're cutting meat, uh, you know, and, and just fish, you're not boning, you're, you're just cutting steak on a wood cutting board, you're just cutting vegetables and stuff, that edge will hold up. But if you're gonna take a knife out of your pocket and you're gonna go cut limbs, I do this all the time, and I grab a big old hunk of grass and I cut it, you know, uh, I do a lot of stuff with my pocket knives that require me to have a little bit of a thick blade or I'll just trash the cutting edge too fast and then it's no good. This is Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. You're already on YouTube, uh, you know, subscribe. Uh, we do a bunch of videos here and there. You might get 10 videos at a time. Uh, we try to do some shorts, that's a good deal. Um, you know, if you just feel like giving somebody a bad time today, go online and give me a bad time. <laughs> Uh, you know, I may talk back with you about your bad time. That's fine, but it's all in fun. And if I was to meet you somewhere and didn't know who you were, I would treat you just as nice, kind. Uh, I'd be just as pleasurable and pleasant as I am right now. Um, if you want to, you know, ruffle my dander just a little bit, you know, you can do that too. But I, I'm never mad the next, I know I don't get mad. I, I'll, I'll give you a little, you know, sass back, but I'm never mad. I don't care what you do to me. You can't really make me mad. All right, this is Brad Buckner, SharpensBest.com. You take care. We'll see you later.